Hi, everyone. Welcome to another mini episode of Joyful News, a collection of stories I curate from around the world that spark joy. And this one is all about dinosaurs. Fun fact, when I was a kid and anyone asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, my answer was a paleontologist. And though I didn't end up pursuing that path, I did become a biomimicry scientist because of my love for dinosaurs. The world works in mysterious ways, and I'll tell you all about that in just a moment. Friday was a big day in the U.S., the release of the movie Jurassic World Dominion. The best part, of course, is seeing all those gorgeous creatures rendered so beautifully and having the gang back together on screen. And I'm just going to say it, Laura Dern is a queen and the most underrated actress in Hollywood. The movie features one of my very favorite dinosaurs. I mean, really, they're all my favorites. But Dreadnoughtus is a titanosaur that's especially close to my heart because Dreadnoughtus was discovered and named by my dear friend, mentor, and science hero, Dr. Ken Lacavera. He's the reason I'm a scientist today. Ken and I have crossed paths like ships passing in the night since the late 1990s when we were both in Philadelphia. I was a student at Penn. He was a professor at Drexel. But we didn't meet in real life until 2017. He did an interview on Science Friday when his wonderful book, Why Dinosaurs Matter, came out. As someone who'd been following his career, I immediately got the book, wrote a review of it, and shared it on Twitter. Ken wrote back that my review was the nicest thing anyone ever said about his writing. In the review, I shared that my freshman year physics professor at Penn told me I had no mind for physics. That sent me spiraling, because at the time, when a world-renowned professor said something about me, I believed them. Devastated, I dropped out of the engineering school and left science in my rearview mirror. Even though I went on to find other passions at Penn and in my career, I was always deeply ashamed that I let one man who didn't even know me take away my love for science. When Ken read that story in my review of his book, he wrote to me and he said this, Krista, if you want to have another act in science, you can do that. It's never too late. No one has the right to be a gatekeeper to your dreams. I'm going to get that last line tattooed on me so I never forget it. And because of Ken, and the Ologies podcast that connected me to an entire community of science lovers. I became a scientist. A late blooming scientist, but better late than never. I love Ken, and I'm so grateful for his support of my life and my career. Get his book, Why Dinosaurs Matter. It's how science writing should be done. You can also get a look at Dreadnoughtus by watching Prehistoric Planet, a new series on Apple TV narrated by the one and only Sir David Attenborough. That voice is the soundtrack of my dreams. Prehistoric Planet contains the best CGI animation I've ever seen, and it really does immerse you into the world where dinosaurs reign supreme. Steve Brasati was the consulting paleontologist on Jurassic World Dominion, and his new book, The Rise and Reign of the Mammals, A New History from the Shadow of the Dinosaurs to Us, a follow-up to his book, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, A New History of Their Lost World, came out last week. Both books are beautiful, and I highly recommend them. Well-written, well-researched, visual, and you really do feel like Steve's telling you the story himself as a trusted guide through prehistoric times and into our modern world. When I'm over in the UK later this year, I hope I get to hop over to Scotland and say hello. Another dinosaur book I just finished is The Last Days of the Dinosaurs, An Asteroid, Extinction, and the Beginning of Our World by Riley Black. My friend Diana Montano, who runs events and the book club for Science Friday, put Riley's book on my radar, and it's just gorgeous. Lyrical, poetic, and a joy to read. She takes us back in time to the moment just before the asteroid hit, all the way through the present day, in just over 200 pages, to explain how the fall of the dinosaurs is responsible for our lives and world today. It's a hopeful book that shows the resiliency of the planet and the resiliency of life itself. Also, the last line of the book made my heart sing. And if you weren't endlessly grateful to dinosaurs before, you will be after reading this book. Also, if you think I'm reading a lot of books about dinosaurs, you're right. I'm always reading a lot of books about dinosaurs. Finally, I want to celebrate my friend Dustin Grawick's recent set of Dino 101 videos he started releasing on Instagram and Twitter. They're a fun, funny, and entertaining intro to different species, and they'll quickly become a welcome bright spot in your day. They certainly are in mine. So far, he's covered Tyrannosaurus rex, Nidrosaurus, and Myasaura. I'm always down for supporting people pursuing their passions. You'll quickly realize that saying Dustin is passionate about dinosaurs is probably the greatest understatement I've ever made. Find Dustin on Twitter at Dustin Growick and on Instagram at Dinosaur Whisperer. And if you've got a favorite dinosaur you want him to cover in an upcoming video, let him know. He takes requests. That's joyful news for this week. There's a transcript and links to all these news stories on kristaapampato.com slash joyproject. There's also another new episode of Joy Project out now, The Joy of Airports with the charming Felicia Sabertinelli. You can find all the episodes, transcripts, and related links at kristaapampato.com slash joyproject. You can connect with me on Twitter at KristaNYC and on Instagram at KristaRoseNYC. 
I'll be back in two weeks on Tuesday, June 28th with another interview episode and another mini episode of Joyful News. Thanks for being here with me, for telling people about this podcast, and most of all, for making joy, sharing joy, and making the world a better place just by being who you are. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, friends.